How often do you wake up with loads of energy ready for a great day? How many days a week do you wake up before your alarm clock without hitting snooze? Be honest, if never or very rarely is the answer, stick around because I'm gonna give you tips on exactly how to fix that. In this video, I'll cover the simplest and easiest ways to improve your sleep quality so you can wake up actually feeling rested for once and not have to use your damn alarm clock. And most importantly, I'm gonna make this process extremely easy to implement and easy to understand, unlike most of the videos I see here online. So let's dive right into this. But first, I'm Coach Tyler. I've been a personal trainer and online coach for over six years. I've helped over 455 people completely transform the ways they look, feel, and perform in their everyday lives. And I want you to be the next. That being said, let's dive right in. It's time to talk about sleep. Now, first, I must let you know, I am not a so-called expert on sleep, but I do have a lot of experience fixing my own sleep, which I've struggled with for many, many years, especially when I was younger. But now I have a lot more experience of not only helping myself improve my sleep, but also working with hundreds of people improving their sleep quality so they can actually wake up feeling energized, have better workouts, have better recovery, and not have those pesky cravings that come up when you have poor sleep quality. Now, before I get into why sleep is so important, I would really appreciate you if you take a second to comment below if sleep is something you've struggled with or if you find value after watching this video. Now, if you didn't know already, sleep is essential. It is one thing that we cannot live without. And a fun fact is that the easiest way to actually torture someone is to deprive them of sleep. That goes to show how important sleep is for not only our physical body, but also our mental health. Sleep is gonna play a major role in our recovery, our muscle building, our memory, so our brain health, mental health. On top of that, sleep can also affect our mood, our appetite, and our cravings. I don't know if you've ever experienced this or connected the two, but I know personally when I have poor sleep, I tend to have more weird and random cravings. Have you ever noticed yourself craving weird things on a regular basis? Well, it could be linked to your poor sleep. Now it's time for the fun stuff. Here are the exact five steps you need to reverse engineer the perfect night of sleep. Step one, you need to figure out what time you are going to wake up on a daily basis. For example, if you need to be up for your nine to five job at 7 a.m. every day, you need to be in bed at a specific time. Now, most often I recommend to people to be in bed anywhere from eight and a half to nine hours. You and I both know it takes some time to actually fall asleep. So if you can be in bed for at least eight and a half hours, that one gives you time to actually fall asleep once you are in bed and also gives you a little bit of time for when you wake up in the morning to wake up and sometimes before your alarm clock if you do this right. Just as an example, if you do plan to be up at 7 a.m., being in bed by 10 p.m. is most ideal. Step two is preparing your room for a great night of sleep. One of the most important factors for quality sleep is having your room as dark as possible. Having either blackout shades, having the room extremely dark, covering all the lights that are in your bathroom or night lights or anything like that, having the least amount of light in your room possible is gonna help you get deeper, longer sleep without any interruptions. Another huge factor in quality sleep is the temperature of the room. Generally speaking, you're going to sleep best between 60 and 68 degrees Fahrenheit. However, this is a personal preference. I know generally speaking, most females that I know of that I've worked with tend to like the room a little bit warmer and most often males like it a little bit colder. But again, for you, it is a personal preference. So find and play around with that temperature to find what is perfect and right for you. Step three, one hour before bed, you should begin avoiding any bright lights, such as your phone, electronics, TV, anything that gives off a bright light. So most electronics give off what we call blue light. Blue light is essentially light that mimics the sun or is similar to the sun. When we start to avoid this kind of light, we will notice our body will actually start to naturally produce more melatonin, which again is essential for deep and a full night of rest without waking up a bunch in the middle of the night. So avoiding lights one hour before bed is essential for deep quality sleep. 
For our example, just to stick to what we've talked about so far, if you plan to wake up at 7 a.m., you should be in bed by 10 p.m. And starting at 9 p.m., you should start avoiding any of these bright lights. Before I move on to step number four, two little pro tips I have for you. Number one, if you can travel in your home with either a candlelight or just go ahead and dim as many lights in your house as possible, that's gonna also have a very similar effect. If not, I highly suggest investing in a high quality pair of blue light blocking glasses. Now, there are a bunch of cheap, horrible versions of these on Amazon. So if you want a quality pair, I am not affiliated or sponsored in any way. I do love the brand Felix Gray. They make really good quality blue light blockers. And on top of that, they do have their own patent on their technology, which does not require an orange lens on those glasses, which is what most real blue light blockers have. They are extremely awesome. Uh, and I wear them pretty much every night. Moving on to step number four, two to three hours before bed, you should stop eating. Eating too close to your bedtime can cause a lot of digestive issues, preventing your muscle gain, your recovery, have you wake up feeling bloated or gassy. And on top of that, the last thing you wanna do is wake up in the middle of the night having to pee. So I usually suggest stop drinking water anywhere between one and two hours before bed to prevent yourself from waking up having to pee in the middle of the night. So just to recap where we are, if you plan to be up at 7 a.m., you should be in bed by 10 p.m. You should begin avoiding blue light by 9 p.m. and stop eating by 8 p.m. Step number five, one of the most common ones I see with people, especially people who like working out later in the evening, is caffeine. Caffeine has a half-life of six hours, meaning if you consume 300 milligrams, six hours later, 150 of that is still in your system. So you have to give ample time for your caffeine to actually get out of your system so you can actually fall asleep and stay asleep. So I usually recommend to stop consuming caffeine 10 to 12 hours before you plan to go to bed if you want the best sleep possible. This does include if you are working out late in the evening, you should avoid consuming caffeine. I know this probably sucks to hear, but there are some great non-stim options for pre-workouts that I highly recommend if you are someone who does like pre-workout and does tend to work out later in the evening. So for example, if you plan to go to bed at 10 p.m., you should stop consuming caffeine anywhere from 10 a.m. to noon in that window and no later. So let's break this down one last time and give you the full run through of what this will look like. So step one, you're going to wake up at 7 a.m. By the time 10 o'clock noon rolls around, you're going to stop consuming caffeine. Around 8 p.m. at night and no later, you're going to stop eating food and around an hour after that, stop drinking water. Then around 9 p.m., you're going to dim all the lights in your house, try to stay off your phone, go plug it in, keep it in a separate room, stop watching TV, or if you have to, put on your blue light blockers to avoid that blue light. Then by 10 p.m. you should be in bed ready to go to sleep and then you will wake up feeling energized, not require an alarm clock, and actually have the quality sleep where you wake up ready to kick ass every single day. Now here's a couple bonus tips that you probably didn't ask for but I'm going to give them to you anyways because these are tools and things that I found to be extremely helpful for me. So number one is the hatch alarm clock. I found this on Amazon and it's been an absolute game changer for me. So 20 to 30 minutes before I actually wake up, this alarm clock actually starts to show a little bit of light and it gets brighter and brighter and brighter as it's time for me to wake up. And most often, if I'm getting really good sleep, I wake up to the light and not to the sound of the alarm clock, which is a more gentle way of waking up, which doesn't make me mad or frustrated like you're waking up and jolting out of bed. Number two, like I mentioned before, the Felix Gray blue light blocking glasses are the highest quality, best ones I've found. And I've tried many, many different pairs off Amazon and they were all garbage. So I highly recommend if you are someone that likes to watch TV before bed, getting a high quality pair of blue light blockers will change your life. Next, one of the most common deficiencies I find in my clients, as well as something I was deficient in, is magnesium. Now it is not something that everyone should take and I'm not recommending you take it, but I do believe most people are deficient in magnesium. So it could be something to try that could be helpful for you. And lastly, if you are someone who has a hard time falling asleep 
at night or takes a long time to fall asleep, one of the hardest things is getting into that parasympathetic state. So two things that I do if I'm finding myself having a hard time falling asleep is either reading a book, I don't know about you, but reading really puts me to sleep. So that's one thing that can help actually get you in the mood for sleep. And number two would be some sort of like yin yoga or stretching, doing some mobility that's very relaxing and calming or doing some sort of breathing slash meditation exercise can really help you get really calm into a relaxed state and ready for bed. Now, if you've made it this far, I do want to let you know one thing that we do with our clients is walk them through an entire sleep routine, reverse engineer their sleep for them. And if this is something that would be extremely helpful for you, I'm more than happy to get on a call completely free. Just use the link below to book that and we can break down your sleep and talk about the things that you should do in order to optimize and actually get the best sleep quality of your life. So go ahead, check that link below if you wanna book that and we can get on a call together and go through your sleep routine and how to optimize it for your lifestyle. If you found this helpful, please take a second to like, subscribe, and if you have any questions at all, please feel free to drop them in the comments below Below. I answer everyone's questions and I'll always get back and give you the best answer possible. Thank you again and I look forward to bringing you more content just like this. Peace.